We recently made a video about the Holy Roman Empire's depiction in Crusader Kings 3, where we discussed Matilda of Tuscany telling the story of how she hosted Pope Gregory VII at Canossa Castle during Emperor Heinrich IV's famous walk of penance known as the Gang nach Canossa. Many of you were keen that we make a follow-up video focusing on Matilda herself. This is not surprising, since Matilda, or La Gran Contessa, as she was known by her contemporaries, is not only a fan favourite of the Crusader Kings community, but has a fascinating backstory. So that's just what we will be doing in today's video. Additionally, we will provide some context to the region of Northern Italy in the 11th century, examining how it is portrayed in Crusader Kings 3. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, we warmly invite you to do so, so that you don't miss any of our videos on the historical background of your favourite strategy games. We're also excited to announce that we have just launched a new Patreon account, giving you the opportunity to support our channel and helping us to create content about our two favourite things, history and video games. Link in the description. Matilda of Tuscany was probably born in the Tuscan town of Lucca in 1046 into the noble house Canossa. The Canossas were named after their home castle, Castle Canossa, which had been built in the early 900s. Canossa lies north of Lucca in the Italian region of Emilia Romagna. House Canossa had a charming motto, Quando il cane finira l'ossa, finira casa Canossa, which translates to, when the dog finishes the bone, so too ends House Canossa. Matilda was born as the youngest child of her father, the powerful Boniface of Canossa. Her father had inherited a sizeable domain, and was Count of Brescia, Canossa, Ferrara, Florence, Lucca, Mantua, Modena, Pisa, Parma, Reggio, and Verona. It is no surprise that with such a large collection of county titles, in combination with his steady reign and diplomatic cunning, he was elevated to the feudal title of Margrave of Tuscany in 1027 by the Emperor Conrad II. Boniface met Matilda's mother, Beatrice of Lorraine, at the wedding of Emperor Heinrich III, who we briefly covered in our previous video about his son, Heinrich IV. They married and had three children, Matilda, her older brother Frederico, and her older sister, Beatrice. Their father was assassinated in 1052. It is unclear if this was a plot by Heinrich III, or by lower nobility. He had become unpopular with the Valvasores, the lowest rank of the nobility in northern Italy, because he was trying to limit their rights to increase his own control. Kind of like when you use the option to increase crown authority in Crusader Kings. Following his death, Matilda's brother Frederico inherited Tuscany at the age of about 12, and her mother Beatrice became regent. Their mother remarried Duke Godfrey the Bearded of Lower Lorraine, who was considered a traitor of the Holy Roman Empire, and she was temporarily imprisoned by Emperor Heinrich III. Not the smartest diplomatic play. Both Matilda's older siblings died during this tumultuous time, Beatrice in 1053 and Frederico two years later. So in 1055, the Margravate of Tuscany was passed on to the nine-year-old Matilda. As mentioned, Heinrich III was not a fan of Matilda's new stepdad, Godfrey the Bearded of Lorraine. In general, the Salian Emperor took a dislike to the powerful alliance of rulers of Canossa and Lorraine. However, Heinrich III died a year later after Matilda became Marchioness, leaving his young son Heinrich IV in power. Like many other powerful vassals within the empire, the Canossas and the rulers of Lorraine took advantage of the instability of the realm under the young King Heinrich. So, to further strengthen the ties between the two families, Godfrey and Beatrice decided to betroth Matilda to Godfrey the Bearded's son and heir, Godfrey the... Hunchback. In game, whilst Godfrey's son lacks this flattering nickname, he does however start with the trait Hunchbacked. He also lacks the betrothal to Matilda, this is odd since there are clear historical records that when Godfrey Sr. died in 1069, Matilda was already the wife of her stepbrother. She even stayed in Lorraine after the funeral and became pregnant, giving birth to a daughter she called Beatrice after her mother. Unfortunately, the child died only a few weeks later. The death of their child, as well as Godfrey's physical deformity, probably led Matilda to despise her husband, 
and she fled back to Tuscany in 1071, denouncing their marriage. It seems like, to young Lady Matilda, even the strongest strategic bond was not worth living with a husband she disliked. This also meant that Matilda wanted to rule Tuscany without the co-regency of her husband, which was very unusual at the time. Later, Godfrey the Hunchback travelled to Italy in 1073, not only to reinforce their marriage, but also to lay claims to his wife's domain. For these causes, he petitioned Matilda's mother, Beatrice, as well as her new ally, the newly elected Pope Gregory VII. Because Gregory needed Godfrey the Hunchback as an ally in northern Germany, Matilda's request to the Pope to nullify the marriage was not fulfilled. Godfrey succeeded in maintaining the marriage at least officially, but returned to Germany without his wife. We can only imagine the sort of rumours that had spread on his arrival home. A few years later, the separated yet married couple found themselves now as political enemies. During the investiture controversy, the German King Heinrich IV and Pope Gregory VII had a falling out over who had the right to appoint clerical titles within the Holy Roman Empire. And whilst Godfrey the Hunchback, unlike his father, became an ally of the Salian dynasty, Matilda remained loyal to her friend, Greg the Pope. In the wars that raged in Germany in the 1070s, Godfrey the Hunchback and the armies of Lorraine were loyal supporters of Heinrich IV, fighting many battles for the future emperor. But these times of war was where he met his end. According to historian David Hay, Godfrey died rather comically on a campaign in the Low Countries in 1076. Hay states that the Duke of Lorraine was killed by an enemy spear while answering the call of nature. So, the poor hunchback was assassinated whilst he was having a poo. After Godfrey's rather anticlimactic end, maybe it was for the best that he did not witness his heartbreaking wife's most glorious moment half a year later. As King Heinrich IV realised he could not fight both the Pope in Italy in the south and a German faction planning to install an anti-king in the north, he decided to travel to Italy to apologise to the Pope and repent for his sins. The meeting of the two took place at Matilda's home castle of Canossa in January 1077, where she had the honour of hosting the Pope as a guest. Gang nach Canossa, translating to Journey to Canossa, is now a famous German phrase which describes an embarrassing penance one must make in submission to an enemy or opponent. This ritual submission to the Pope signalled the Church's ultimate victory over the state, and would not have happened had it not been for the diplomatic and military support of the powerful Canossa women, Matilda and her mother Beatrice. There were even rumours that exist suggesting Matilda had an affair with the Pope, but we'll leave that one to your imagination. In the 1080s, when Heinrich IV had secured his rule north of the Alps, the conflict between him and the Pope boiled up once again, and Heinrich managed to depose the Pope to replace him with Victor III, a new Pope loyal to him, who could at least coronate him Emperor. Matilda remained loyal to Gregory while the old Pope was in exile, and was involved with the resistance organised by disobedient clerics and lords north and south of the Alps, functioning as a link between the exiled Pope and Heinrich's enemies. This led the Emperor to try and dethrone Matilda from her powerful position in northern Italy. He was unsuccessful, and the Contessa was able to retain her titles not only because of her diplomacy within her own realm, but also due to her marriage to the heir of Bavaria, the 17-year younger Welf V, whose father is the infamous Welf Welf, of whom we covered in our last video. The two married in 1089, and they attempted to produce an heir for the now 44-year-old Matilda, but it was not meant to be. The couple separated again, leaving Matilda childless. She ruled for another whopping 25 years, finally dying of cardiac arrest in 1115. Whilst she had skillfully defended her father's significant realm for a whole 60 years, after her death, Tuscany went into the direct control of Emperor Heinrich V, her arch-enemy's son. With her death, the dog finished the bone, and the line of House Canossa was no more. Looking at other Italian leaders within the Holy Roman Empire, apart from Matilda of Tuscany, there are also the powerful Dukes of Piedmont and Lombardy in the game. Like Matilda, the game's ruler of Lombardy, Alberto Azzo II, 
was not quite a duke, but rather had the title of Margrave of Milan and Liguria. Alberto Azzol's family story is fascinating, as two of his children are considered the founding fathers of two different famous European noble families. With his first wife, Cunegunda of the Welf dynasty, he had one son, Welf I, who is credited with founding the younger house of Welf, honouring his deceased mother's family line. With his second wife, Garzenda of Maine, he had two sons, Hugo and Fulco. Hugo inherited his mother's family titles at Maine in France, while Fulco inherited Este, a city his father is said to have founded. Just like his older half-brother, Fulco thus founded a noble family that held lands and titles in Italy all the way to the 20th century, the House of Este. The House of Este intermarried with the Austrian Habsburgs, which is why northeastern Italy was part of the Habsburg Empire in the 18th and 19th century. This resulting cadet branch of Habsburg Este still exists today, and its current head is Prince Lorenz of Belgium, the husband of Princess Astrid of Belgium. In neighbouring Piedmont, it gets a bit more complicated. The guy ruling Piedmont as Duke, Pierre of Piedmont, was an early member of the important Savoy family, who had a bright future ahead of themselves. Pierre, which is probably his name in the game because of his French culture, is an Italian known as Pietro, and in reality had the titles Count of Savoy and Margrave of Turin. Pietro ruled only nominally, as true power was in the hands of his mother, Adelaide. Adelaide is often compared to Matilda of Tuscany, who was her second cousin. She was a member of the powerful early medieval dynasty of the Arduinici, and had inherited the margravial title from her father, Ulrich Manfred, who had died without a male heir. In the title history of the Duchy of Piedmont in the game, you can actually see how often the title switched between Adelaide, her father, her husband, and her son. This was true because the margravial title of Turin was preferred by the Holy Roman Emperor not to be held by a woman, since it was a very important military position within the empire. All in all, Adelaide had three husbands, only the third of which, Count Otto of House Savoy, survived long enough to produce offspring with her. Among her children were Pietro, his brother and successor Amadeus, and Bertha, who married Emperor Heinrich IV, as we covered in our previous video on the Holy Roman Empire. Before and after Adelaide and her kids, the rulers of Piedmont and their history was rather obscure. However, the dynasty of Savoy held out in the region all the way to King Victor Emmanuel II in the 19th century, who, as King of Piedmont Sardinia, united the Kingdom of Italy in 1861. Throughout much of the Middle Ages, Northern Italy was a part of the Holy Roman Empire. Looking at the de jure composition of the Kingdom of Italy both in 1066 as well as in 867, it is striking to see how little of today's Italy this kingdom officially included. It is basically just made up of Lombardy, Tuscany, Piedmont, Verona and Friuli. This is historically debatable. The Kingdom of Italy was pronounced by Charlemagne after he invaded large parts of the Kingdom of the Lombards in 774. But the Lombard Kingdom, while having its heartland in northern Italy, included the whole peninsula with the exception of a small Roman state and the very south of Italy ruled by the Byzantines. The Lombards confusingly continued to rule duchies in southern Italy, with the region of Lombardy now constituting the core of the new Frankish Kingdom of Italy. When Charlemagne died, he only had one surviving heir, Louis the Pious, so Louis inherited the Frankish Empire and ruled it from 814 to 840, more or less continuing his father's stable reign of this huge chunk of Europe. However, when Louis died, there were three sons who all felt entitled to inherit parts of the empire, and so in the Treaty of Verdun, he divided it up into West Francia, East Francia, and Middle Francia. Middle Francia was inherited by Louis's oldest son, Le Fair, who ruled the short-lived kingdom from 840 to 855. When Le Fair died, the oddly shaped kingdom of Middle Francia was once again divided between his three sons, creating the kingdoms of Lotharangia and Italy. One of Le Fair's sons was Louis the Younger, 
who is actually the current holder of the Kingdom of Italy in the game's 867 start. In reality, Louis was not only King of Italy, but despite his nickname, he was the oldest of his brothers, and had thus also inherited Charlemagne's primary title of Emperor, which he officially held until his death in 875. That is also why he was called Louis II, a name he has in CK3, despite this referring to his title as Emperor, not King of Italy. It is a pity that his Emperor title is missing from the game, but it demonstrates that the concept of Emperor was way more complex in reality than it is possible to portray in a game. Fast forward to the starting date of 1066, Northern Italy is part of the Holy Roman Empire, with the exception of Venice, which is displayed as an oligarchic republic, Rome, which is the seat of the papacy, and Pisa. Pisa was an independent merchant republic from around the start of the second millennium to 1406, when it was conquered by Florence. During that time, they resisted several Holy Roman Emperors, however we could not find any information about Pisa's current ruler in the game. There is so much that could be said on Venice and Pisa, so perhaps we can look at it for a future video. How well do you think Northern Italy is represented in Crusader Kings? Are there any interesting characters in the region that we missed? Let us know in the comments. Once again, we've launched our new Patreon account so you can help support us in doing what we love. We will be opening a Discord channel for Patreon supporters, as well as putting our patrons' names at the end of the video. More info in the link below. And as always, please like and subscribe for more history in bits.